Do you analyze romance the same way you analyze your data? Oh, <laughs> that's a really good question. I don't really take, take the outliers that personally. I take the sort of the, the minor things. Okay, like, a, girl, a girl slaps you. <laughs> yes. She slaps you once a week. Once a week? That's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> You're telling me that that's... that's... Wait, in bed? <laughs> Here we go, one more time, everybody's feeling fine. Here we go, yes, 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 here we go, you know this? And sync is got Welcome back to the episode of J Bro and Friends. Ooh, that's a new one. Yes. Because this is the first episode of this podcast. That's right. It's been long overdue. Finally live at your home. Mmm. Mmm. Mm. Mm. Unfortunately, no friends. <laughs> no friends. <laughs> you guys are only friends. Only friends. Ooh, Ooh. Ooh. new idea. If this doesn't ever yeah, yeah, pop yeah. off, we're gonna go only friends. Only friends. Oh, that's, that's more intimate. That is actually very intimate. Intimate conversations, not intimate photos. How about that? Oh, intimate. Okay. Sexy that is dialogues. sort of the premise of this podcast. The goal of this podcast is to bring the voices of the nine to five, nine to five average gang. Joes, gang. the Joes and Janes. And talk about anything ranging from career to love life mm. to eh, really anything that's relatable. And it's coming from like a regular person. So let's start off with quick intros. Background, body count. <laughs> <laughs> I got it, I got that, that, that's, It's turning red. That's a must, okay. that's a must. <laughs> Back, yeah. background, background, body uh, count. <laughs> Education. Education. Uh, how much you make? Just oh. kidding, just kidding. I'm not, I'm not doing it. No, we should, we should. No, I'm not doing it. No, that. no, we're going to. It's going to be the thumbnail of this video. No, yeah. it's so personal though. The Ooh. last one to finish has to Wait, wait, wait. wait. <laughs> My name is John Yu. Dr. Pati John Yu. Yeah, patients call me Dr. John Yu. I'm a kid's dentist. And on the side, I am a personal trainer. Might not look like it, but it's because this suit <laughs> is uh, it's not fitted. No, you look like a personal trainer. Oh, oh thanks, oh, yeah, bro. Yeah. Thanks, bro. That. <laughs> for fun i love to make videos mm. and flex my creativity side i see what's your body count my body count cannot be revealed it's irrelevant over 20 let's <laughs> proceed okay <laughs> hi my name is jason i'm a machine learning research engineer Ooh. i make uh computer programs that automatically analyze videos and my body count is... <laughs> stop with the body count nobody cares okay, <laughs> <laughs> okay. the way that this is going to be organized we're gonna ask each other questions, try to get to know each other better on a career, or it could be an intimate level if yeah. you care. It's, it's kind of like a date. It's like a speed date. Yeah. As we progress, we're gonna try to uncover more layers. And ask some juicy questions. Uncover more layers and undress, undress more layers. Oh. <laughs> yeah. What's your favorite part of being a dentist? Ah, uh, it's the patient population. I chose specifically kids. I love kids. I see. Yeah. What about kids that you love? The nose picking. <laughs> yeah, no, this, uh, their behavior fascinates me. Things that they do, I love figuring out why a kid behaves the way that he or she does. I see. And then with that knowledge, trying to one up them. Oh. You know, to help them. <laughs> you one, up, one up them one, one to help one them. One upping the kids. One upping the kids to help them. Yeah, because yeah. if I have a better understanding of how their yeah. brain works, yeah. then I can anticipate their next behavior. So you're almost forced to be a psychoanalytic kid analyzing, psychiatrist. Analyzing almost. behavior yeah. and modifying my behavior to have a better outcome for them. I see. It's not only the most challenging part, but I think it's the most fulfilling part. For me. And I think that's what people actually really like about your YouTube shorts and stuff like that. Oh, uh, I didn't expect that kind of uh, attention, to be honest. Yeah, yeah. I put those, when I first put those up, I was like, it's just what I do. Yeah. Uh, I appreciate that you mentioned that. At first, when I was trying these things in dental school and in residency, it just it was something that I thought was normal to me. Yeah. It's like, okay, the kid's crying. What do I say? How do I say certain things? Again, how do I play chess with this kid yeah, yeah. so that I can get him to do what I want to do? Yeah, yeah. And the surface, like those videos, seem like a, like a cute, cute, like you know, mm. like a kid's dentist and a kid interaction video. Yeah. But it's like an actual educational sort of cycle. Analysis I, I love that people actually see those videos and think that way. Yeah. yeah. Now I'm trying to make it more explicit as to what I was doing I or see. explain in the text or video. Yeah, yeah. And people, but people pick up on it very well. I see. You, you, should, really you should write a book on how to psychoanalyze uh, pediatric patients. I think that would be cool, like an ultimate project. Yeah. To analyze some of these uh, samples and say this is why I said this. Yeah. Yeah. 
this is instinctively what the kid was doing. Mm. You should yeah. write like a like a case like um, document for each mm. patient and kind of like describe like the cycle. Sort oh. Of. oh, man, that would yeah. be really cool. You are a machine learning engineer. Is that what they call it? Machine learning AI engineer. Should I describe what that is? Let me tell you what I know about it. Oh, oh. Oh, yeah. Analyzing data to predict future outcome. Oh, that's really good summary. Yeah, yeah. But my question is, what makes machine learning difficult or what makes it a particularly demanding profession? So you have to have not a, lo a lot of knowledge. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> knowledge. Uh, it, like technically? Yeah, so it's a lot of technical work. So, okay. So in regular software engineering, you have yes. to know coding. Right. And you know you need to know the basic concepts of like how to write software. But on top of that, in machine learning, mm. you have to know statistics. Machine learning is a subtopic in programming that deals specifically with uh, creating algorithms. Ah, uh, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I see. So, so the, the general programming doesn't require using data to predict. So that's why you require that stat background. Exactly. Like facial recognition. Okay. Um, like, you know. Ride sharing apps. Ride sharing apps, like time prediction. Okay. Um, things like Instagram promoting, like what you like seeing on your um, feeds and stuff like that. So one of the reasons that engineering is such a sexy profession is that it's highly lucrative. Well, I, I don't know if it's, if it's a sexy career. You know, most people won't say like. Sought oh, after. It's a sought after career. Yeah. It's a sought after career because of the stability and the opportunities. But it's not exist. sexy? I mean, you can make it sexy. You can make it sexy. Just as you can make dentistry sexy. Dentistry is sexy. Uh, yeah, a lot of oral, you know. <laughs> care. Care. Oh, what are you thinking, bro? Oral care. Do you like what you do? No, I do. I actually uh, really enjoy... Didn't you have doubts when you were doing your PhD? Oh, no. I was thinking something different, actually. I actually had a big career switch that's why it took like a year to uh, land a job <laughs> but now you're happy now I'm you have a job that you enjoy yeah would you recommend machine learning ai engineering oh for sure anybody that's interested in programming and mathematics mm. this is the future so what if you're interested in women this is also oh <laughs> <laughs> all right john um this is a very serious question mm. do you enjoy looking at people's mouth <laughs> <laughs> It sounds gross. Mm. I love it. You love it? I love it. Okay, what aspect of like the treatment? So people look at it as a mouth. Yeah. Like, saliva, gross. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of tartar plaque, yeah, disgusting yeah. stuff. <laughs> you've, you've seen my mouth. In too much detail. <laughs> yes. I've cleaned your mouth before. You did, you have, yeah. It's a, it's a body part that I'm responsible for. I see. Because like, as a non-dentist, uh -huh. like, just picturing like looking at people's mouth like, ah, you know. Ah, <laughs> it's, it's a oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> it's a foreign concept. Do you look at other people's mouth like uh, when you meet them like on a date or something? I, I do like a mock-up. Do you <laughs> yeah. know what that is? No. Mock-up is like a smile design. I don't intentionally do it, Yeah. but I do like a quick exam. Is that the first thing that you do? <laughs> I do. No, no, it's a, uh, the smile is the first thing I notice. I see. Teeth actually first thing I notice. Okay. But for a lot of people, that is the case. Okay. You actually notice the person's smile, their eyes, right? So, so when you're on a date, your first impression is the, the mouth. It's part of an initial impression. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so I think that's, that is, that's the case for a lot of dentists and non-dentists. But, but you're very specific. It's like, you can tell like the color grading of the teeth and like, alignment. Uh, uh, symmetry, mm -hmm. aesthetics. Oh, symmetry, aesthetics. Uh, ortho. Okay. Have you ever yeah. been uh, hit on by a patient? Hit on by like a kid patient? No, no. Kid patient's guardian. <laughs> oh, I'm Not surprised. a kid patient's guardian. Not really. In, in dental school, I, I have. Oh, in dental school, yeah. yeah. When I was treating adult patients. But you sure? You sure some, uh, you know, mothers come into the office, you know? I don't think this is appropriate. <laughs> okay, fine. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is not appropriate. <laughs> I'm still working. <laughs> No, I think it happens in the, in adult clinic setting. Oh, I see. But if I were to ever see that, that would, that would be very, make me very uncomfortable. Oh, I see. Okay. I mean, people are nice, mm. but not like blatantly like flirting in front of their kid. Oh, that's true. That's true. Have you ever impressed anyone with your engineering capabilities? Oh, you know, it turns out that being a, a nerd is kind of sexy these days. I think it's always been. Oh, I don't think so. Really? Sapiosexuals, bro. That's, Intellectual. That's a, that's a recent phenomenon. Is it? Yeah. It wasn't a thing back in, you know, my no, inte days. Intelligence has always been sexy. Not not in public mainstream, like, not in the mainstream media. Mm. You, know, you, you never saw, like, cool nerds. Only recently you see, like, Tony Starks. I think you think of Bubba Sparks, <laughs> the rapper. <laughs> I see, I don't know. I, yeah. uh, Tony Stark. Tony Stark, uh -huh. you know, Elon Musk of the world. Aha. Uh -huh. But here I am, you know, coming at you hot. You, know, you think about stereotypical 
engineer. He's, he's very introverted. But another stereotype I'm gonna break here yeah. is that like, you know, you would imagine like female engineers to be a little bit like nerdy. Uh. But in fact, like most of them are like really attractive, <laughs> I find. Uh -huh. Which is very like counterintuitive. Or maybe it's just like the racial thing, but they're not weird. And um, they're just smart and just hardworking people. All right, so this is a juicy question that everyone wants to know. Okay. How much money do dentists make? Uh, this is a common question. Yeah. It depends on a lot of things. I know that's a very unsatisfactory answer, but it really depends. All right, show us what was on your IRS uh, 1080. You my wallet? 1080. <laughs> it's different because uh, I'm a business owner. Yeah, yeah. And I've been fortunate to have my clinic as of last year. I see. So it's always been my dream. Okay. Over 300K? Yeah. Oh. I mean, uh, most most clinic owners, I think, are making more than that. I see. Yeah, uh, dentistry can be profitable. It's harder than it was before. The golden age is over. If you talk to any like 1990s dentist, such a different story because insurance rates were higher. Any region like New York City, there's like 10 dentists in the block. I see. Or not the block. There's like in the neighborhood. The competition there's, there's competition is fierce. It actually lowers the insurance rates. There's mm -hmm. a lot of uh, corporation takeover. Mm. Not necessarily a bad thing. But think of like uh, mom and pop uh, pharmacies. They're getting gobbled up by CVS, Walgreens. Okay. I don't think it's a profession where if money is a sole driver, it's financially a good decision. I see. Because there's a lot of schooling. A lot of schooling. Education's very expensive. And the kind of work that you do, honestly, I think you can make more money doing something else. For the amount of effort that you put in. I see. If you actually truly care about your patients. Yeah. You put that kind of effort into a different project. Mm -hmm. I think you can, actually, you can actually make more. Anyways. Long story short, uh, I'm happy. <laughs> <laughs> would you ever date another dentist or have you already dated another Dude, dentist? I would love to. You would love to? Oh, okay. All right, yo, <laughs> oh, dentist no, I didn't out there. Like... If you're watching this video, make sure to share it to every other dentist you know in the network. There were a lot of dental school couples in my class mm. and a lot of dentist couples. I used to think that being very dissimilar was cooler. You mm. know, like my ex-girlfriend's an artist. Yeah. I thought, she, I thought she was really cool. Definitely keeps things interesting. Yeah. But I think because I'm so work focused, having someone who understands, but also at the same time that I can support. I see. You know, it's a it's a mutually oh, so, so beneficial you, relationship. You actually prefer to date a dentist in the future. I mean, I never have. Yeah. But I think it'd be, it would be cool. I don't know. I'll update. Okay. I'll update you guys if I do, and then it ends up not working. Yeah. <laughs> All right. If you're a dentist, comment on this video right now. No, because even when I talk to my dental friends yeah we could talk for hours and it doesn't even seem like time passed mm -hmm. maybe for them they feel like it's, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, a, it's a chore but yeah i don't know it's just bouncing around ideas and uh on? i know what they're going through that mm -hmm. i feel like they understand me. yeah yeah, yeah. I don't know. there's a mutual connection because you, you are in the same world yeah, yeah. do you care about the profession i think if i had to choose a profession yeah it, like as a like a future spouse mm. ideally you will be in healthcare because it's like such a flexible work hours, at least most of them. And there's a security there. Uh huh. Whereas like a lot of different fields, like the work is not flexible. Oh, uh, I see. You're like tied by the corporate, uh, uh -huh. tied by the work. Mm. Whereas dentists, they set their own schedule <laughs> generally. And then they don't take home uh, work. Okay, I see your perception. Yeah. Well, you know what's Stop. funny though? We, we think that we have it harder. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. because we have to, we cannot do work from home. Oh, you know, I it's see. like grass okay. screener. I see. Because we are not producing unless yeah we are seeing patients. Well, it depends. I mean, if you're if you're a business owner, mm. it's different. But okay, um, we envy people who can do work from home. Oh, that's true. <laughs> you know what dentists call dentists? What? Specialized blue collar workers. Oh, I see. Because the moment our hands stop working. Yeah, yeah. You know? I see. Anyways, it's but, a, but it's such it's... a relatable career. People ask me what I do. They're like, they just oh. look at me kind of like blank. Oh, usually. because everyone know everyone's been to dentist. Hopefully, yeah. 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 <laughs> I, I just tell them I work at home in my boxers. No, but you know what you can explain it as? Yeah. You can explain it surrounding an app that they're familiar with. Mm, like, hey, true. open up your Uber. Yeah, yeah. This is what I am responsible for. Yeah. Or like your dating app. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can do that too. You can do that too. Uh, Jason. Yes. As a as a love doctor. <laughs> I am a love doctor. Do you analyze? Romance, the same way you analyze your data. Oh, that's a really good question. I'm, I'm a 100% data-driven person. Yes. So I always like try to look for different tendencies in people. Oh. And based on their tendencies, like I use my pr prior knowledge to classify them into like certain categories. <laughs> <laughs> basic, has, that, has that helped you? Kind of basic. <laughs> has that helped you in, in predicting outcomes or changing outcomes? 
<laughs> well, I don't have enough sample size okay. to make you don't like have a prior knowledge. Sure, you know, like statement about like the performance. So in about four years, you're gonna be like the most qualified date expert. Yeah, you know, I'm averaging it like three dates a week. You know, you're so getting. I should be at like. Wait, you should say that you're joking because you don't actually. Uh, no, 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 yeah. joking right here. Joking. <laughs> I'd be lucky to go on three dates a year. Three dates is a lot a week. That's a lot. That's a lot. That's a lot. That's a lot of work. You, would you say that you're getting better? At uh, analyzing people. I, I am better. You, you know what I tell people always? What? Um, the way a person is, yeah. is by sort of a statistical average of their daily behaviors. Mm -hmm. So sometimes, you know, they might have off days. Mm. Like they're like kind of pissed off or being moody. Yes. But if that's like, uh, at certain times, that's fine. But if that's happening more often, then you kind of have a sense that what they're like, you know, okay. day to day. And then you try to go based on like the average of like their behaviors. Right, because the other things could be outliers. Yeah, but some people take like specific actions. Like, oh, personally. I see. Like, oh, he that takes more like, weight. That one, yeah, that takes more weight. But to be fair, those can actually make or break a person's character. That's true. Because those ups and downs, those mood swings, for yeah. example, in a day that you can, you can knock those out. I see. But those take more weight personally or psychologically, it can yeah, have yeah. more impact on a person. Yeah. So do you take that into consideration? Personally? I don't really take, take the outliers that personally. I take the sort of the, the minor things. Okay, like a, girl, a girl slaps you. <laughs> yes. She slaps you once a week. Once a week? That's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> You're telling me that that's... that's... Wait, in bed? <laughs> That's part of her normal, okay. okay? That's like every day. Okay. She slaps you across the face because she's mad at you. Oh. She, she does that once a month. Oh, that's a lot. Okay, she does that. She does that to you once in the first six months. You're gonna take So I, I don't really like try to focus on the extremes. Because I try to, the extremes I, I carefully analyze. Very carefully analyze. I get it, but yeah. that to me, even though it happened once, yeah. the moment someone lays a hand on yeah. Me or a loved one. That's a huge deal. Doesn't matter if it happened once or twice. That is true. Violence is a big thing. Okay, so violence may be very black and white here. Yeah. But there are certain things that can red flag someone, and those outliers, human behavior wise, have to be controlled. Yeah. Because those outliers could actually destroy a person. So, but those extremes are kind of obvious that those are red flags, but, but they're not obvious. Some, some people stay in relationships because they're not obvious. Well, for most people, they. We perceive that's an obvious red flag, like a violent, physical violence is a red flag. Right, so I said that's very black and white, but there yeah. are certain other tendencies where you're <laughs> taking the average to be the defining person. But I still think that like drunk behavior is still a person's responsibility. Oh, for sure, for sure, for sure. So even though that happened once, even cheating, so big deal or not? Those are extreme things that should be heavily weighted in okay. terms of being a red flag. Or not. Okay, so we see on that. Because yeah. as, a, as a data scientist, I yeah. thought you were gonna say, eh, it happened once. Forgivable. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> okay, okay. Now I'm talking about things like, you know, people being on time to things. Oh, okay. Like, so not like debilitating behavior. Yeah, yeah, yeah. not debilitating behavior. Where people keeping promises. Like, okay, fair. With their uh, words. That's being reasonable, though. But you know, sometimes like people are like, oh, you didn't do this for me. Oh, at that one time. They I take see. Seriously. Okay, okay. Well, no, you're, I see. you're good 99% of the time. I see. Um, okay, they take too much, uh, they put too much emphasis on the one a rare occurrence behavior. that doesn't actually. Exactly. So uh, you are the true love doctor. A love doctor who's single and is still learning. <laughs> Doctor's always learning. Oh, yeah. even the love doctor. Is PhD's a lifetime process? Oh, deep, deep, <laughs> deep, deep. Pretty hard dig for a lifetime. <laughs> All right, John, so let me ask you, mm. where do you see yourself in the next five years and then 10 years? I'll be 36 and 41. Okay, what's your body count by then? Body count? Hopefully it'll be a steady one. I mean, like present body count. <laughs> Steady one per okay. my life. Okay. I, I want to get married. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't clear to you. Yeah. I was very confused there. Yeah. I think five years from now, I'm going to have many clinics, do more volunteer work mm. for the kids. Yeah. And I think financially, I'll be in a situation where I can do more passion projects, okay. like these like um, dental mission trips. Yeah. That'd be really cool to do only the things I'm really passionate about. And in a sense, I'm doing that right now. Okay. But still, right now, I'm, I'm building mm. you know, offices and yeah. I still have to be financially responsible for certain things. But five years from now, with the team that we have, uh, the sky's the limit. Awesome. Guess who's buying dinner every time? 
I will gladly. Yeah. <laughs> but you're gonna be five percent. You're gonna be you're gonna be loaded too. No, I'm gonna be finding a sugar mama. So that's that's my probably your plan. <laughs> you could do that right now. <laughs> I'm trying. I'm trying. Uh, are you? I'm Is trying, that why you're wearing a tie? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if you like my tie, you should see, you know, shoot me a DM. Five years from now, for you. Five years from for now, for me. Um. So the project that I'm working on. Yeah. So we're building a next generation 911 emergency system. Mm. So our hope is that we get a big fat government contract to actually make this into like practice. What is the next generation 911? Instead of just calling into 911 service for emergency base with the phone, you can send videos, text, any types of multimedia and the AI will automatically analyze those data and kind of fast track you mm. into getting the services that you need. Oh, yeah. it'll literally save lives. Yeah, it will save lives. That's cool that the work that you do on a daily basis, you might not see the immediate effect, yeah. but you know that it will translate to better quality of life, or in your case, <laughs> literally. Yeah, saving lives. M more lives saved. Yeah, so yeah. That's, that's it. Sugar mamas, call me. Save, save a life. Save my life. Sponsor Jason Key. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you don't need a sugar mama, dude. Fine, fine, fine. That was a really good, uh, interesting conversation. I, it was. I it was know refreshing. A lot of things about you in that aspect, because mm. you know I, we always talk about dating and relationship, and we on like, camera. On camera, we do. But even in in person, we never talk about our careers. Like true, like true. This. We just say like, oh, it was a busy day today. It was a busy day. Right, you know, I yeah. had to solve this number of patients. Uh, true, like, true, true. But it's good to know that you have a lot of you know plans and ambitions for your career, and I hope you guys found that conversation very interesting. If you like what you heard today definitely give a like if you didn't leave a comment <laughs> just kidding and if you're a dentist <laughs> looking for a lover leave a comment as well i'm open yeah i'm open yeah yeah whatever and if you're not a dentist doesn't matter it doesn't matter it's open i'm um, open i'm an open man yeah. <laughs> are you an open man i'm too open sometimes stay tuned for the next episode and check us out on the podcast link mm -hmm. here please Give that a follow. I don't even know why I even describe that. Yeah, we're we're gonna be on Apple, Spotify, and Google, as well as other podcast platforms out there. Is so. there a Google?